Guys, today we are celebrating because it's finally book publication day. The Crumbs and Doilies book is out today. Oh my goodness, what a ride. <laughs> you guys have been supporting us in your masses. Thousands of you have pre-ordered. We could not be happier and we are really touched by all your support. So thank you all if you've ordered. If you haven't, you can do that now. Um, I mean, no pressure, but it's a brilliant book. <laughs> <laughs> I confirm. Thank you. Me too. Um, so, to get the ball rolling, because we can't wait to see your bakes, we're going to bake one of our own, one, from one of our favourite layer cakes from the book. It's the Sticky Toffee Pudding Cake. It is our favourite because it is absolutely delicious. So this is four layers of sticky toffee sponge, which has got dates, stem ginger and loads of spices in there. It is moist and just gorgeous. And then we're going to fill this with a sticky toffee Swiss meringue buttercream. So we're going to make a sticky toffee sauce, the little secret ingredient that I'll show you later. And then it's also going to have some creme pat in it. So it is literally a sticky toffee pudding in cake form. It is our favourite. It's the guys down in the bakery, it's their favourite. They cannot wait for us to make this cake today. <laughs> They're all there with their yeah. spoons downstairs. We can't we? eat all of it. <laughs> can't, no. But so we better get on, we'll leave Gemma to get started. Yes. We better go and make our bits. Yes, all right. Good luck. Have fun. Okay. Yes. Yeah. See you, you too. <laughs> Bye. Well, the main thing is the sponge. And this is, like Sally said, a moist, spicy sponge. And it's packed with dates and ginger and lovely, yummy spices. So to start things off, I've actually already pre-soaked um, these things. So I've got 450 grams of dates and six globes of stem ginger. That's the stuff in the jars in the syrup. And I've also got three teaspoons of bicarbonate of soda and 525 millilitres of boiling water. Now that's been sitting there for about five or ten minutes just to soak and soften. And I'm going to put that into the food processor and just blend it until it's really nice and smooth. Once that's a nice, thick, smooth goo, you can pop that back into the bowl and set it to one side. And beat 225 grams of soft, unsalted butter along with 450 grams of light, soft brown sugar. And you want to beat those together for about five or ten minutes until they're pale and fluffy. Once it's nicely beaten, you need to add six eggs. You can add those two at a time, beating for about 30 seconds after each addition. And if you need to give it a stop and scrape midway through, go ahead and do that. Now, once all your eggs are in, you need to add your dry ingredients. So I've got 525 grams of self-raising flour. I'm also going to put through this sieve one and a half teaspoons of ground cinnamon, one and a half teaspoons of ground ginger, half a teaspoon of ground nutmeg, and three quarters of a teaspoon of salt and whack your paddle back on, and that just needs to all be folded together. You can do that by hand, but I like to do it just on the slowest speed of my mixer. And when it's almost all mixed through, you want to add your delicious, slightly odd looking, but really delicious smelling date and ginger goo. And just pour that in gently, and again, just mix it through slowly. You can do this by hand as well. Once your butter's nice and smooth, you can pour it into your tins. I'm using four eight-inch tins. I've already greased them, so just distribute the batter as evenly as you can. So once all your batter's in, you can just level that off by giving it a little shuffle, because it's already quite a loose batter. And then this needs to be baked at 170 degrees C for 22 to 26 minutes. The best test is always going to be a skewer test, so stick a skewer right in the middle. If it comes out clean, it's ready. Now over to you, Dane. Thanks, Gemma. So I'm gonna make the creme patissiere, which you might have seen us make a couple of times before on the channel. It's super quick, super easy, and this is a really small quantity. So first thing we're gonna do is put 225 grams of whole milk into a small saucepan and one teaspoon of vanilla extract. And we'll get that on a medium heat until it starts to come to a simmer. So the next thing we're going to do is crack our eggs. We only need two eggs for this, and I'm only using one egg yolk and one whole egg. To both the eggs, I'm going to add 70 grams of caster sugar and 20 grams of corn flour. Corn flour is just going to help to thicken it up once we put it back on the heat. But in this bowl, we're just going to whisk it together until it's nice and light and fluffy. It'll go a bit paler in colour. And then the milk should be ready. So we're going to take it off of the heat, pour it into the bowl, whisking continuously until it's a nice smooth mixture. And then we're going to pour it back into the pan, get it back on the heat, and just whisk it until it starts to become a nice thick mixture. It will start to bubble and boil a little bit. And that's when you know the corn flour has been cooked out and it is ready. 
Now the custard is nice and thick, it's really smooth, and we're gonna put it in a sieve, set over a bowl, just to get rid of any lumps there might be in case you like ducked off for a second and you left it. The egg is cooked and made scrambled egg at the bottom maybe. Now that it's all through the sieve, and you can see and hear that there are like a few little lumpies that we just don't want in there, so that's what you gotta do. And then just scrape all the excess off the bottom because you don't wanna leave any of this custard. We want all of it to go into the cake. And then the last thing is to get some cling film and just press it right onto the top of the custard so that it doesn't form a skin. Leave it to cool and then pop it in the fridge to cool completely. It is all starting to come together. The cake has just come out of the oven and it is smelling so good. Custard is made, it is now time for sticky toffee sauce and sticky toffee Swiss meringue buttercream. Now I just made my sauce and I did it on the hob and it is so super duper easy. So first off, you want a medium sized pan and into there you're gonna put 160 grams of both unsalted butter and muscovado sugar. Now that's the really dark, treacly, sticky stuff. Also to that, we're gonna add 200 grams of double cream. Now heat that on a gentle medium heat and stir it constantly until the sugar has fully dissolved. It's really important that it's dissolved because otherwise you'll end up with a grainy sauce. Now that it's smooth, we're gonna add in a pinch of salt and then our secret ingredient, which is half a teaspoon of Marmite. This is gonna add a really fabulous taste to our sticky toffee sauce. And lastly, pour it into a bowl to let it cool down completely until we use it. And this is what we've ended up with. Super shiny, glossy. It's quite a thin sauce and it smells amazing. Obviously, if you don't like Marmite, then you can leave it out, but it's not really like you taste it. It just adds this kind of bitter, deep taste to it. So please stick with it, trust us. <laughs> right, so I'm just gonna leave that to cool down completely whilst we get on with making the Swiss meringue. Swiss meringue is super easy, we've done it heaps of it before, so I'll just whiz you through it. I'm gonna start off with 300 grams of egg white here in this metal bowl, and to it I'm gonna add 600 grams of caster sugar. Now I'm gonna pop this over a bain-marie on gentle heat, and we're gonna stir it with a whisk constantly. Now what we're looking for is for our sugar to completely dissolve. You can test this by rubbing a little bit of the mixture between your finger and thumb until you cannot feel any grains of sugar. This can take around five to seven minutes. That is ready, so now it is time to whip this up into the most delicious buttercream you have ever laid your eyes on. So we're gonna start by pouring this all into the bowl of my mixer here, and I've got a whisk attachment on there, and I'm gonna whisk this at a really high speed for about five minutes, or until it's cooled to the touch, because what we're gonna do next is add butter. And we don't wanna add butter to a hot mixture because it's just gonna melt. So when your mixture is cool, we're gonna add in 720 grams of super soft, uns salted butter. It really needs to be soft for this, so just go on and add it in a little chunk at a time whilst the mix is still going until it is all incorporated. Okay, this is looking great. Now, one thing I just wanna mention about Swiss meringue is once you've put your butter in, it can look really soupy. Even if the mixture was cool before you put it in, please do not freak out. This happens every single time you make it, right? All you need to do is keep on whisking on the highest speed and then suddenly it will just all come together and it will look like this. Let me get my spatula in there. It's so silky and fluffy. This is the perfect consistency. Oh, delicious. So now it is time to add some sticky toffee sauce. So I took out about half of the sauce that I made earlier. Now we wanna add this when it's cool, so if it feels a bit warm, again, just stick it in the fridge to cool down a little bit. And I'm gonna add all of this into the bowl, and then I'm just gonna mix it through on a medium speed. Oh my goodness. Ooh. <laughs> it is silky, it is soft, it is stiff. It smells amazing and it tastes awesome. So that's it. I'm gonna go join Dane and Gemma and we're gonna get this cake built. I am starting to trim these lovely squishy spiced take cakes. You can see how squishy and moist <laughs> they are. It's all over my hand. So I've got the top off and then we're gonna use a cake ring to just chomp out the outer edge. That's just that caramelization that has hit the tin. 
but we're not going to throw this away. We're going to do something extra special with it because we're going to use it for the decoration to make some crispy cake crumbs. So all I'm going to do with this is just crumble it onto this baking tray lined with some greaseproof paper and I'm going to pop it in the oven for about 30 to 40 minutes until it dries out nicely. But whilst I do that, Sally's over here and she's got something really cool to show you. I need your cake. Oh, though. she needs my cake. Okay. <laughs> Well, I have the first layer, so. Goodness. Oh, amazing. I'll pop it for you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm going to start layering up this cake with all the amazing bits that myself, Dane, and Gemma have already prepared. So, actually, what I'm going to do at first is just take a bit of this icing out because we might get crumbs in it doing this, and we don't want crummy icing in our nice top coat, do we? So, we've got our icing here, and I'm going to stick my first bit of sponge down with some buttercream. So I'm going to put a blob in the middle of the board and then I'm going to take the first sponge and pop it in the middle of the board. Now I'm going to top this with a nice thick layer of the sticky toffee Swiss meringue buttercream. I'm going to spread that all the way to the edge. Next up, we need to put in our creme pack custard and our sticky toffee sauce. Now, if we just put these on top of this icing, it's going to splurge everywhere. The cakes are going to do this which is kind of fun, but not if you're trying to ice the cake. So what we're going to do is we're going to scoop out a kind of divot using our crank pallet knife here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put the pallet knife about one inch away from the edge of the cake, and I'm going to very gently turn the turntable and scoop out the middle of the icing. And now we can grab the creme pat, which we've put into a piping bag and chop the top off. And I'm going to start by piping a ring just around the edge of that divot. And then once that's in place, we're going to fill in the remaining hole with our sticky toffee sauce. This is utter cake madness. But that's why this cake is going to be so utterly delicious. So now I'm just going to keep on going, building the layers up with the same fillings until we get to the very top. All right, so when the last piece is going on, we always turn it upside down so that we've got an easier surface to work with when we're icing it, which is what we're going to do now. We're going to give it a crumb coat as per usual. I'm going to try my best because it is it is pretty jiggly. If yours is like this and you're scared, just put it in the fridge for 10 minutes just to kind of set that icing and it'll be much easier to give it a crumb coat. I'm just going to give it a go. It'll you give right. it a go. <laughs> and while Sally's doing that, I have finished crumbing the last of my crumbs, and I'm gonna put them in the oven at 150 degrees until they're very, very crispy. Not bad. So now this is going to go into the fridge until it is set nice and firm, so at least half an hour, and then Gemma's going to come in and she's going to decorate this, and it is going to be beautiful, and then I'll be back to eat it. Well, this cake is looking fantastic, thanks to Sally and Dane, stars that they are. Now, I'm going to give it its final top coat and flourishes and they can look all set for a party because we absolutely have to have a party because it is party time and we've got to celebrate this book somehow so now that my cake's nice and cool and in fact it's it's firm to the touch it's been in the fridge for actually about an hour and it's completely firm which means that all those crumbs are completely locked in so now it's time to give it it's like Spruce. I'm just applying a generous amount of the Swiss meringue buttercream all over the sides using my straight big palette knife once I've done the sides, I'm going to move on to the top again, putting more than I need all over the top. It's best to use a bit too much because that way, when it comes to smoothing it out, you can remove the excess with your cake scraper and it will leave you with a really smooth finish. How satisfying is that? Now, it's looking a bit blank. You could leave it like this if you want, but we like to do things a bit differently around here. So I'm going to grab a little crank palette knife 
and just get some of my lovely leftover sticky toffee sauce, so toffee so can't even say it, sticky toffee sauce, and just put a few dots around the edges. And these are going to just provide a little bit more, not texture, but like visual, let's say visual pizzazz. And then just grab your cake scraper back again and use it to kind of smush some of that lovely sauce around the edges. And finally, to finish, I've put some of my Swiss Marine buttercream into a piping bag, just with a simple star nozzle. You can use whatever kind of pretty pattern you like. And I'm just going to create a wall of rosettes all around the edge. Once I've finished that, I'm going to flood the middle with my sticky toffee sauce. All right, I'm not going to level it off or anything, because gravity is already doing its thing. It's creating this lovely, smooth top. Now all I need to do is use my yummy crispy cake bits which we baked and dried out. So I'm just going to grab the tastiest morsels and just top all those little rosettes with them. What do you reckon? Oh, I cannot wait to dive into this and let me tell you, when you cut this cake and all that toffee sauce pulls down the slice Oh, it is stuff that dreams are made of. But I need friends, I need a knife, I need plates, I need forks. Here you go. Some people this oozing, I just want to eat it now. Well, your wish is my <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. Have to do a sidey. Go, go, Woo. go. Oh my gosh! Whoopsie. Mm, can I have a piece? Yeah. I want my own piece. Oh, <laughs> I didn't know we were doing that. Oh, I usually saw a few plates. I ain't sharing that cake for nobody. <laughs> <laughs> well, we yeah. Here, you have this one. Oh, okay. That's the biggest one. <laughs> Look at that. Look at all of this goopy goo oh just God. dribbling down. You've got the custard oozing out. Oh my god. Oh. oh my gosh. I mean, Amazing. if a cake could be sexy, then this would be that cake. This is a damn sexy cake. It really <laughs> is. Look at that. Right, fork. Oh, fork, fork. Quick. Custard on everything. Here, have, finger. A, have a tea oh, towel. <laughs> okay, here goes. Oh, I don't know which bit to start with. Do I want All custard? Do I want in. sauce? Okay, just go in. Mm. Oh my goodness. <laughs> mm. It is so moist. Mm. If you love sticky toffee pudding, mm -hmm. this is literally a sticky toffee pudding. Like, it is. Just you with know added what? icing. I've had a crazy idea, guys. What if you just put this in the microwave for like oh, 20 seconds? Oh, yes. <laughs> to warm it up. Mm. And well, is that wrong? Probably. Mm. It's so good. Yum. The sponge is kind of like dense, but not like. Gross dense, like nice dense, like, like a sticky like a pudding. Pudding. Like a pudding. Like a pudding. <laughs> and the custard is really delicious too. Yeah, that is an absolute triumph. Mm. Wow. You know this is good. I haven't said anything in about one minute. Oh yeah. Because I love it. <laughs> That's I true. Love it I so much. I thought it was feeling you were very quiet. Yeah. And I, I, I didn't even notice until you mentioned it. Well, thank you so much for watching. And thank you so much for all your support. If you've bought a book, we are so grateful. And if you haven't yet, then don't forget. Sally's got all the details. <laughs> of course, you can head over to crumbsanddoilies.co.uk or cupcakegemma.com and order yourself one of these absolute beauties. This is just one of the incredible recipes in this book. There are so many in there. And if you get one, you get these cool little if you what get one from us. Bookmark, <laughs> yes. If you get it from us, you're going to get one of these bookmarks so you know where you are. Oh, look, it just happened to be on my favourite recipe in here. <laughs> my favourite cake. Mm, it's Matching. a good one. Black Sesame. <laughs> Watch out. <laughs> and if you get these at the bottom, there's some little tokens that you can redeem in the Crumbs and Doily shop in Soho for a free cupcake and a free cookie. Why wouldn't you want to do that? Exactly. And we couldn't release our first recipe book without doing a book signing. So if you are in London, or if you're not, and you want to plan your trip, then this Sunday, I mean, we're giving you a lot of notice here. <laughs> a couple of days, but also we did announce on Instagram, so you can't tell us we didn't tell Stop you. Stop all your plans and come. <laughs> and come. This Sunday, 27th of November, we'll all be there in store. We can sign your books, get a book, bring your pre-order if you've, if you've got it already, or if you haven't, you can pick one up in store, of course. And we'll have lots of treats from the book on the counter, so you yeah. can experience them firsthand, baked by Team C&D. 
ourselves. Yeah, indeed you can. So we hope to see you there. In the meantime, if you bake from this book, please hashtag Crumbs and Doilies book. And why not also hashtag Cupcake Jenna? We don't want to miss a thing, guys. And we're just super excited to hear what you think of this book. And thank you again for being here and being up and just having our back. <laughs> you know? We love you guys. I do love you guys, but you know, I also really love this cake. She's got yeah. a point. It's probably time to eat more cake. Mm, it definitely is. Mad like, love. <laughs> Mad to love. the cake. <laughs> oh my God, he's so sassy. He's so sassy. <laughs> Come on, we've got to get to the sofa and eat more. <laughs>